that's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about episode one of Mary and George, the new Stars series, which will be available to stream in the US on April 5th, 2024, based on the 2017 nonfiction book, The King's Assassin, The Secret Plot to Murder King James I by Benjamin Woolley. So the series is about the Countess of Buckingham, Mary Villiers. Is that how you say her name? Villiers. Villiers. <laughs> and played by Julianne Moore. And basically she's pimping out her second oldest son, or her second son, to King James the First. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we watched episode one. I didn't know much about this story, so I was shocked um, at how gay it is. Mm. I don't know much about King James the First, so a lot of it was surprising to me. Sure. Uh, the title of the first episode is The Second Son, and it's directed by Oliver Hermanis, the South African film director who we reviewed his last, one of his last films, Mafi. He also oh. did Living, which scored Bill Nye, uh, Oscar Nod, a oh. remake of a Kurosawa film. I'm also a fan of uh, Beauty from 2011. This was a good start. Mm -hmm. to the series. I was intrigued. It opens in 1592 in England, and we see Julianne Moore giving birth to her baby. And that was an interesting birth. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it almost seems like she's casting a spell on the baby. Yeah, she's like a witch a little bit. And she doesn't want to cut the um umbilical cord yet, because mm -hmm. she's telling him basically like, you're my second son, you ain't shit. And <laughs> she's explaining that the first son is the one who gets everything. But... Well, and then we move to 1612, so now the baby is 20 years old, so it's a grown man. And he's hanging from a tree, he's trying to kill himself. Mm -hmm. And we learn that the relationship between Mary, Julianne Moore, and her son George, played by... Nicholas Galatine. Is contentious, because her eldest son... John. Appears to be maybe like special needs. Lame. He's definitely not going to uh, get her anywhere in life. But she recognizes that her second son is very attractive and that she can use him to marry into a wealthy family. So we see that she, her current husband, is this rich man who is awful to her, probably because she's just using him. And we see that she kind of like accidentally kills him and ends up with nothing because he hated her. Mm -hmm. So he basically wrote her out of his will. He left everything to like a cousin or something. It's very Betty Davis and the Little Foxes. <laughs> oh. If you think about it, but yeah. So of course she panics. We get a scene with her and her accountant and the accountant's like, well, or a lawyer, the person handling her finances. The barrister. And he says, well, girl, your only option is to marry another rich man. I thought a really funny moment when she, she goes, okay, well, do you have any in mind? Yeah, I know a few. Okay, well, when can I start checking them out? Well, four weeks at the minimum, but if you don't want to seem like gauche, I'd wait like six weeks. And then we get the... Uh, she waits two. This bitch waited two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we see her go to a function, and she is very aggressive. She walks up to this man and basically says, like, I need a husband, you, you need a woman, like Sir Thomas Compton, played by Sean Gilder. Uh, and here's the deal. Like, I need someone to take care of me, but I'm not going to bleed you dry. Like, we can sign some papers. All I ask is that you take care of me and my kids. Specifically, my second son, he needs a fancy education in France. But getting back to the son trying to hang himself, he doesn't want to go to France. He knows his mom's plan for him, which is to become like this aristocratic fancy boy and marry a rich woman. But he is in love with one of the servants. Jenny. He thinks he is. But it's very obvious that he's gay and that he's in love with her in that way that's like, I think I'm supposed to be in love with her. Mm -hmm. But his mother, she knows what's up. Yeah. So she forces him to go to France and immediately when he gets to France, uh, it's a very different world. Yes. Because they, he has like a, how would you call the guy who's... His teacher. His handler. He has like a handler who we know from... Jean, played by Khalil Ben Garbia from uh, Peter Von Kant. And so he's being, t he's like going to this manor. I don't know if that's where the school is, but that's where uh, George is staying. And immediately we see that. There's an orgy going on. It's just orgies, yeah. like in different rooms, people having sex, and it's like gay and straight sex. And of course, George is shocked. But very quickly we realized that he 
you know, he can get into this. There's actually a moment where he has a threesome with his mentor, teacher, and some other guy. While that's all happening, Julianne, Mary, is settling in with her husband. And we see that one of King James, like, assistants or whatever, has gone to Mary's husband to say, like, hey, the king is traveling England and needs to set up places to stay. And he would like to stay in your mansion. But the husband says no. And Mary is like, why? Like, why wouldn't you want the king here? And he says, oh, it's such a hassle. He's crazy, debaucherous, that he tears up all your shit. It costs so much money to host him. He eats all your food. Yeah, like, tears, like and, and then all the paperwork. It's not worth it. And she goes, please, please, please. I've never met the king. I think it'd be a great opportunity. Please do it. And he agrees. So the king shows up and we see that King James the first is like a rabbit homosexual. Mm -hmm. and he has all these handsome men around him. And well, his main squeeze is the Earl of Somerset played by Lloyd Davidson. And Julianne Mary is very intrigued, very intrigued. There's kind of a sickening scene where she goes like hold by candlelight in the middle of the night to go see what the king is up to. Mm -hmm. And then his little main squeeze comes out. At first, trying to tell her, like, mind your own business. But then she clocks him. And then the king is kind of intrigued by it. And they start making out in front of her. But the king has another assistant. The, his only English aide, Sir David Graham. An older gentleman. Mm -hmm. And he... What I think I love so much so far in, like, in this episode is that... I think Julianne Moore is the perfect person to play this role. Because I feel like... As an actor, like as a person, it seems like she probably does surround herself with a lot of gay men of a particular class. And so she's probably used to all this bitchiness. So I find it funny that her character is sort of in the middle of it and they're gravitating to her. So this older English uh, aide is telling Mary that they don't like that all of the king's, like, they have a name for all these boys he has sex with, like lap maids or lap hands or something mm -hmm. that they're all Scottish they don't like that and she's like oh you want some homegrown sodomites and the guy goes actually yeah do you know any she goes, and she yeah, goes yeah, yeah I do and this bitch is talking about her own damn son mm -hmm. so then it's very like perverted Jane Austen <laughs> is how she feels to me so George return turns home and she tells him the plan and at this point, he's more receptive because we can assume that all this time at that mansion, he's been having uh, man sex. So he's with it. Well, he has been taught by Jean that bodies are bodies. And he says that to his mom. She's like, yeah, they're also currency. Yeah. Get with the program. Yeah, like, come on now. So she sets it up with the help of that little English aide that George is going to be a server at one of the king's dinners outside of Mary's home. But the other servers are jealous because mm -hmm. now here's this new handsome kid taking their spot. And so as George is about to serve the king, a plate, one, a plate of meat, a plate of meat, a server trips him and embarrasses him. And what does George do? Get up and whoop that boy's ass. But that little Earl, the king's main squeeze, he noticed that the king was checking George out. So he immediately gets up and says, oh, you, like, uh, assaulted someone in front of the king. That's a crime uh, with penalty of, like, an eye for an eye. So I need to chop your hand off. And right as that man's about to chop George's hand off, the king stops him and goes, well, hold on. I saw that guy trip him. So, I mean, you know, it's not his fault. And I think that that guy getting his ass whooped is his punishment. So we should let George go. Because obviously he likes him. And the Earl, whatever, is mad. So then the king, but of course the king has final say, but the king says, well, let my beautiful wife, the queen, decide. Queen Anne, played by uh, Danish royalty, Trina Deerholm. And she gets up and she's like, oh, let him live. Like, like she's just glad to, she seems like she's just happy that her man doesn't want to be on her. And yeah. that she's the queen. So uh, that's the end of the episode. But I, I thought it was pretty exciting. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh, continuing. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.